any woman married to a pastor knows that you are the second fiddle like you you don't even you don't have your own life they are supporting their husband's ministry they don't have their own identity amazing you how are you doing welcome to chat hour it's your first time on this channel welcome and thank you and if you are returning welcome and thank you you are the real mvp my name is honeypot and today i am super duper excited to have tokwe mark odige in the I want to say in the building, in the car. In the power, in the car. Yo, yes, yo, yo. I am super excited about it. Mm. Takwe, how are you? I'm doing amazing, and beautiful. I, and I've been meaning to tell you that this hair is really lovely, it's, it's super giving. lovely. It's <laughs> giving. I like the color. I like that yeah. you're wearing jeans. It's keeping it in. I love it. <laughs> so, guys, please do not forget like, to subscribe, share, like, subscribe. share. Yeah, thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Aha, uh -huh. so we have Tokwe on this particular topic because, you know, Tokwe and I would like to talk about church things. Tokwe is my church sister, amongst <laughs> other things. So she's checking whether I came to church, we go to the same church, but do you know that I've never even seen Tokwe in church? Ever. Before. <laughs> but she shall believes that I go to church one way or the other. <laughs> it's okay. Um, so uh, recently I saw this post and this person says that for 27 years, mm. she's been a pastor's child. And that, you know, she does not, that if her husband becomes a pastor, she's going to run away. And somebody now asked me, why? Mm -hmm. Can you please explain? She now said, ah, it's too much to put into writing or something like that to go to TV. You get, that same post though. I saw it in the comment section. Somebody now said that for almost 30 years, she's been a pastor's uh, daughter and she would not even mind getting married to a pastor. Ah, different strokes for different folks, right? Mm -hmm. So recently as well, I saw a movie a christian movie and this movie goes like this there there is this sister the sister uh has been waiting on god to get married and you know all the people who have been approaching her uh like pastors you get pastors in the real sense of it and she did not like it she doesn't even like it for anything and so she has this friend who's mommy jill uh you know she's married to a pastor and so she was just talking about you know relationship stuff with the person and the person was like ah, why do you want to marry you know this pastor this recent one that came to you you know uh he's really a good brother like you should think about it you should marry this um guy now I'll give this guy a chance and so she said no just as they were talking the pastor came in and so when the pastor came in the pastor they greeted oh hello darling how are you this other that, that, said ah. the pastor's wife now said honey i did not hear the sound of the vehicle now i didn't know that you had arrived he now said ah, that you know god placed it on my mind that i should give the car away or i should give the car to somebody mm -hmm. and so i did as god said and the woman just went okay and then the pastor went inside even me that i was watching i was like ah, is that how he goes as the pastor just ended this friend who has been talking about not even wanting to get married to a pastor just went i don't talk him. see one day this guy would just come back home and say and he would have given you out to me and say god laid it on my mind to give so would you i know you're married mm -hmm. but would you have actually marry the pastor if a pastor had approached you before you got married um as at when i got married i probably wouldn't have married a pastor because most of the pastors i had seen up until that time majority of them were not financially comfortable <laughs> number one number two it was the fact that i didn't i, I feel like you would live you live your life for jesus but you have a consciousness of the fact that there is it's not everything by the grace and mercy of god i didn't like that oh by the grace and mercy of god because it's, it, it serves as an excuse not to do the work oh god helped me but it's an excuse not to do the work so i had reservations towards um being married to a pastor i feel like i know that i'm called to preach i'm called to serve mm -hmm. so i didn't I, I felt it would be a double whammy for me to have ministry and then my husband to his ministry then both of us will just it, it would be it won't be a balanced setting hmm. um but with the benefit of the years i've had in marriage and all of that um and and beyond that i and with the people i've now met 
as single past young um, pastors wasn't impressive. It, the people were not developing. The pastors I saw them were not developing themselves. They were focusing on, oh, it's by the grace of God. God has said it. God will do it without taking responsibility. Mm -hmm. And I knew that that was not the, uh, the Bible I studied gave me a different template and I did not see men embracing that type of template. So I knew I wasn't going to marry someone who was churchy. I was going to marry a man that was godly. Okay. So for me, it was not the churchy part. It was not the religious, hmm. the, re the religious regiment, hmm. you know, that people carry out. I wasn't interested in you carrying Bible under your hand, being in church morning, afternoon, night, cleaning the church after service. That wasn't it for me. I wanted to see God in the life of the person in the smallest things, how you nurture your parents, how you honor your parents, how you take care of me, how you are considerate of other people. You're just you kind. Yes, that's that's God in mm. action. So I didn't want God in ma in words and churchiness. I wanted God in action. So I, and majority of the pastors I saw at the time, they were mainly churchy and professing and not living by those values. And I think that's why that pastor's um, daughter would have said the same thing as well because. That's, it's that hypocrisy that makes somebody say, ah, I've lived in a pastor's house for 27 years. I'm not marrying because what you see on the pulpit is different from what I'm seeing ah. at, at home. So it was important for you to be able to investigate deeper. Okay, mm. so I've not finished that my story mm -hmm. of that movie that I watched. <laughs> so this lady now, she now finally got married to a banker. Hmm. And one night, that was how the banker woke up in the middle of the night and woke her up and said, um, you know, darling, I've been meaning to tell you that, you know, God has been placing into my heart. Uh, God has been calling me, you know, but I've been running away from the call, uh, you know, to serve him. Jesus. And the girl just went, you know how somebody is just waking up from sleep and was just still trying to boot oh and wrap her head around what the husband was saying. And then she just went, eh? Our eyes just cleared. Hey, what did you say? Cut the call. Cut that call. God is what? Calling you. Cut it immediately. He said, no, I've picked the call. And oh that man said, this was what I was running away from and all my life. Now, I am now married. And you just woke up. You said that you want to answer the call. Or you have answered the call already. Mm -hmm. So when I told somebody this story, the person said that, I think the calling is really on that lady. Go, go, go. That is that lady that, you know, has been running away from. It's Maybe destiny. yeah, it's a destiny to get married. <laughs> that thing can be so scary. Like, yeah. But you know, when I see pastors, I mean, for instance, I joined Hallelujah Challenge. Mm. And so when I joined Hallelujah Challenge, the last one was uh, 20 days. I think it was supposed to be 21 days, but then we just stopped uh on the 20th day. If I was like um a pastor's wife and I'm sorry, and I, I've been honey all day, I'm just using this as an example, like. This is reality. And you had, uh, no, and I've been honey all day, but we have a program and hmm. we are so busy and all that. Planning, planning and planning, you know, planning, planning and then you're praying, you're doing this, and at the end, because I don't even know when it makes out time. Yeah, I know that maybe after the program, maybe they would go on vacation or something. But sometimes you even want to rest as a pastor. That is when somebody will say they need counseling, and because it is the calling that you're I think maybe the reason these people are saying that they don't want to, maybe because it's so demanding. Yes, being a, being and it's, a, people are so judgmental being, of you or something. Being a pastor is a huge. It's a twenty-four. Twenty-four hours is not enough time for a pastor to be a pastor. So the wife, any woman married to a pastor knows that you are the second fiddle. Like you, you don't even you don't have your own life. God forgive you. you. They will say you are not even called. The judgmental part. Mm. You wear trousers, they say the trousers is too long. Mm. You wear shorts, they say the shorts is too short. You call, wear a colored... You, if I'm a pastor's wife with this color of hair, I say, ah, why are you how wearing can this? a pastor's yeah. wife wear, a, wear hair that is this color? Oh, you fix your nails. So there, there is... There's too much pressure on the pastors and the pastor's wife and even the pastor's children. So I believe that this might, this is what is sort of like distracting people, um, causing comments like, yeah. I don't want to be married to a pastor because I, I really want to be able to say I'm done. I can take a break. Oh, as much as I feel like I have a calling and I'm, I, I'm doing ministry, my, in my minute, because I'm not a, I, I'm not gathering a church. If you call me and I'm not in the mood, I will not pick the phone because mm -hmm. I, I, I'm not your pastor. I'll say, go and call your pastor. Yeah. You need counseling, talk to your pastor. I'm not your pastor. I am just supporting you in the way I can. So being a pastor um, is a huge responsibility, like I said. And anybody married to that person would have to carry the body. Hmm. Because when the pastor, when, when you finish service, 
There are several meetings that take place after service. You have naming ceremonies. People yeah. are grieving before you. Oh my God. Everything about people's lives. The first thing they want to do, let me talk, let me talk to my pastor. I need advice. Talk to my pastor. My marriage is not working. Talk to my pastor. My marriage is working. Talk to my pastor. So the good, the bad, the ugly, the pastor carries the brunt. And sometimes the, the pastor would carry everything just until they get home. Then when they get home, and then they like, dump it on the wife. I cannot deal. I'm not willing to talk. Or let me just onboarding to you. Yeah. Or I cannot even handle anything. Or like they just shut down at home. So you have seen your husband being an amazing man to everybody. But at home, he can't he can't give you that because oh he's fed up, he's worn out. So it takes special grace to be a pastor's wife. I can totally commiserate with those <laughs> in that condition what right now. What's I commiserate with you because you are you are carrying a burden that you don't get the recognition for. You know, oh they will praise God. the pastor. Yeah. Everybody will praise the pastor. They forget that the pastor's wife at home Somebody is, is behind. Is yeah. Powering that what you're saying. Powering oh the glory God. you are saying. So I, I strongly, ideas come up and the idea is how to help other people. Hmm. Um, conversations, conversations for the house might not happen. But if a, a fellowship, a church member needs, has a problem, the wife would have to counsel. There was it just a few the um, watch night service last year. Pastor Sam was saying it now. He said that um, there are some ideas that um, his daughter said that this idea you mentioned. In church, yes, 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 yes. I was, I was in, in church didn't that day. give me the credit. Yeah. I, I brought the idea. I was so, in church. <laughs> And everybody will be hailing the pastor, but it was the pastor's daughter that brought the idea that you should be paying me for all the oh, consultation this, yeah. I'm doing for the church. Yeah. It's a lot of, it's a lifetime responsibility and a lot of burden. And if everybody runs away from it, it's like the way Nigerians are running away from good Nigerians running away from politics. Politics, because exactly like where I am work, going to, like who is now going to be the, the man part. of God, the mm. person who will preside over, you know, the service in church. If everybody is running away from them, they don't want to marry them. Because like, you know that many pastors now have, have turned businessmen. Many pastors, no, there's no full-time pastor now. So you know why they will turn business? Because, because it is because of what you up. said initially. Mm, they, so, they don't want to be hungry. In fact, we were just talking about Pastor Sam the, um, mm. um, some hours ago. Mm. I was talking about it with Fola. Mm. Fola, um, you know, was the yes, one who, true. yeah. While we're talking, Fola was like, you know why I like Pastor Sam? Because Pastor Sam uh, has his own business, you know, apart from the church. Mm -hmm. He writes books. I now said to him that, do you know that, in fact, uh, I knew success power on radio that before was ogbc to way back before the church you know and i was like oh my god that is so nice mm. to think that and we're now talking about even delegating mm. duties mm. and i said that even before pastor sam relocated mm. that even in church there are times that you'll come and then you see that it's another pastor who's preaching so i don't know maybe pastors work can actually be very easy if they don't turn themselves to Jew, to Messiah, they are not the Messiah. Um, well, this is not a pastor's uh, of course, this is not of a course, message, yeah. But even Moses got advice from his father in law Jethro because he would have killed himself on how to delegate. It's important that, and, and when we say the Holy Spirit told me, I've that one, I've heard those stories several times. Even someone told me just on Monday that uh, me and my wife were expecting, but we don't have a car. I said, What happened to your car? He said, um, part of the target we have for this year is a giving target. And in the first quarter, we have a target of what to give and we could not meet it. So we decided to sell our car and give it, give the money to church. I looked at him and I said, your wife is pregnant. You don't have you, your car. You decide to sell. I understand the place of radical faith. But God has given you your brains and sense for your purpose. Mm. Your responsibility to God should not keep you from taking care of your wife. Why would she be cranky? Mm. Poor woman is looking at her life and wondering, am I going to be jumping bike with my baby? Mm. This was not what we signed up for. Yeah. And I know that we're trusting God and we're sowing seed and we're making sacrifices for faith. But even as we make those sacrifices that we're making, oh, I'm sowing, sowing dangerously. You know, mm. the Bible shows a lot of, it's not even a lot actually, it's just that the pastors emphasize on those dangerous seeds. As much as all of that happened, your responsibility to your family that you see is very important. How can you be saying you love God that you don't see, but you're not showing love to the human beings around you that you see? You're not being responsible to the wife and the child you're about to have. So those are the things that make people want to pull out from um, active um, pastoring and active ministry. But thank God for the new templates we are seeing. Mm -hmm. When I started, we didn't have those templates. Now we've had templates. Look at um, Bishop David Oyedipo. He has the church, 
he has university yeah they have faith academy secondary school they have businesses mm. if christ embassy has parallax bank medical center schools like they have they have ministries are now gone into mega business so it means that there is opportunity for you to do all that you have um, capacity to do and if you are married to if you if you because i was coming there i was mm. like so how does this now concern the pastor's wife the pastors the pastor's wives should live their life to the fullest a lot of times pastors wives hide, hide under mommy Jew, mommy hmm. Jew, and so, don't do so, anything so, so. they do work okay but they are supporting their husband's ministry they don't have their own identity yeah we you get forever it. remember As... the late um udukoya okay Bimbo oh Dukoya. yeah Bimbo oh my Dukoya god was a woman of god she was married to a pastor That's but so. she had her own identity fantastic her own and that ministry. was years ago because if you're going to say if it was now now you say maybe because it's, it's now trendy. yeah but then it wasn't normal mm. if you are a pastor's wife does not mean you will not have your own life mm. you will not have your own personal ministry or personal calling the lady book um ibidu um ibidu, ibidu, ibidu Godalo is, was a woman of god she was a first lady, but she had, but she had, she had, had her own purpose. She had a purpose, yeah. Thriving Elizabeth yeah. R, yeah. doing events, doing that's decor, right, that's doing right. Organized. So that's right. When you are a pastor's wife, does not mean your life begins and ends with being a pastor's wife. Okay. If you would do ministry like um the way Bimbo um uh, Pastor Bimbo Odukoya did it, you can choose. If you want to do business the way the late uh, Ibidu Igodalu did her own whichever if you want to run a foundation miss uh, pastor nick Adeyemi runs um a very successful orphanage, orphanage yeah so you can right. say okay i'm going to be the voice of love which is what she a brand represents mm. beyond being seeing me as a pastor i am all pastor's wife mm. so the child sometimes the reason people don't want to marry pastors is because the only thing i am is pastor's wife, wife. i'm mommy Gio, and that's all the i am i'm not myself i am it's like people see me and say honeypot's friend you will not like it even if they, i like it the first time because ah uh, honeypot is my friend but imagine if my identity becomes that honeypot's friend yeah that honeypot's friend is not my name that honeypot's friend is not, shouldn't be my life for sure it's, i must yeah. be talked by marco Dige, a friend of honeypot and then so mm. i can be you can be the pastor's wife yeah but you are also a business um Kojo Yamade's wife there are many examples that's right so we shouldn't run away from being a pastor's wife because we've not seen templates mm. you know i said when i if you asked me when i was getting married the templates i saw were not good mm. the pastor's wife would just tie scarf on their head and their life was not yeah it, yeah it was, yes it wasn't it, it was <laughs> not interesting there was they didn't i didn't see I didn't see financially empowered pastors' wives. Mm. I didn't see pastors' wives that were doing all these phenomenal things. things. There were very few. But now we have more examples, which means that you shouldn't, we should no longer castigate pastors' wives anymore. Mm. It's no longer a portfolio that is seen and as a bad thing. It should be. So that more people want to be pastors', pastors wives. Right? So that they will not write that tweet. And people will be saying, yes, yeah, <laughs> me too, I will not do it. There were more tweets saying, I will not marry a pastor's, pastors wife. Oh, a I will pastor. not marry a pastor. a pastor. Yes, there were more tweets supporting the fact that I won't marry a pastor. Me too, I will not marry a pastor so it means that we're setting a negative yeah you trend, get it and I you get it. it okay so i want to ask one last thing before we just close the show mm. today uh so um you know that there is a particular um pastor's wife shiju iluyo made oh pastor so shiju from yes the city of david thank you indeed <laughs> i'd like to talk about her a bit hmm. uh you hmm. know um recently she was really in the news you know but the, uh, uh, yeah and that's not the reason i'm talking about her i'm talking about other reasons the things people say about her now she's very very fashionable you get a makeup is you, off you get so I think that it is just so bad when people say that for somebody like that who likes to be extra because they are now a pastor's wife that Shouldn't they should, uh, you know, uh, play small or not dress as extravagant mm. as they dress just because they are pastor's wife. Mm. And I put myself in her shoes. Oh, only pot is very fashionable. I'm sure you know. If you feel only pot, you know. Only pot is a fashionista. Imagine she married the pastor. Imagine. Because I said, my heart will be from here to here if you want to wear that same uh you know fascinator mm -hmm. or hat go and buy your own too so that you want to now break me 
because but, you are now, do you because understand? you still remain yourself even so, as your so I'm like so is there anything because we've seen uh, uh, mm. issues like this Megan Good uh, mm. the actor uh, um, the Hollywood actor she and you know our marriage, our marriage broke group. at the end of the day because I was watching one uh, you know conversation they were having mm. with church members and the way they were talking up to her was very rude mm. you know and I felt so like I is it even because even for her husband accepted her but this, the, the congregation, congregation was not, not accepting accept her, her. So I think that the man has the man will have to do extra. Um, you you don't sacrifice that. You there there's a compromise is important. You will not be as flamboyant as you are. Mm. You might say, "Oh, I'll still be flamboyant, so maybe I will not show skin as much as I used to show before, or something." I don't there think will I be, really like to show skin, mm, but guess what? Be, I am extra. Trust me. Yes. So there you will still do. I feel like you will. There will be sacrifices you will need to make because you have now become. You have now become a model. You become this a a, a representation. So you don't go wife. extra. You will still um, um Shiju Oluyamade goes extra. But people complain about people it. People complain. You uh, uh, people will talk. Oh. You dress, they will talk. You don't dress, they will talk. Please be sure that from your heart, your your the God you are serving, you are communicating with him. He has no problem with what you are doing. Your husband with the next person does not have a problem. You see the other crowd. Hmm. Is leave them. Mm. You can't please everybody. You're not Jollof Rice. Even Jollof Rice said there's competition. So don't bother trying to please everybody. You will not. It won't work. You would live a life of bitterness. A life of um. You continue to aspire mm. and never get there because you're trying to please people. We are not wired to please people. It doesn't work that way. Our focus should be on pleasing God, and and trying to find a compromise that works with your partner, who is your primary responsibility, your family. Yeah. Because I know we're running off. Here's something I'll leave with um, pastors. A lot of pastors need to learn this lesson. Your priority must be your family and not the congregation. Mm. You cannot love the congregation more than you love your family. Wow. You cannot spend more time with congregation than you spend with your family. You mm. cannot neglect your family because you want to glorify God. Even God will ask you on judgment day, who sent you? Ha. Because if you now spend so much time with congregation, your children are wayward. Your children don't have a good marriage. Your children are... Displeased or they're not you. happy. Yeah. Your even your partner is displeased. Yeah. With you. What have you achieved? It does not work that way. Please, as much as possible, find balance and prioritize what is most important. Love the one that charity begins from where home. at home. Yeah. So let the charity, your kindness, your giving, let it begin at home. Don't start sowing seed outside when your children are hungry. Mm. Wisdom is profitable to direct. Oh wow! <laughs> Thank you so much, Akwem. Thank you, sis. It's always a very <laughs> nice time with Tokwe. Have you had any conversation with Tokwe before? Ah, <laughs> you will learn. You gonna learn. <laughs> All right, thanks so much for watching uh, this video. What exactly are your thoughts? We'd like to have your thoughts down there in the comment section. Do not forget to subscribe, to like, to share. Thank you. Till I come your word again, or we come your word again, let the conversation continue. Bye. <laughs>